Okay, so I pushed the gantry down on the table one more time just to make sure everything was square, and it was. Uh, so now we're putting everything back in the gantry and we're going to follow the reverse order. So again, you want to be really careful with all your components. You don't want to force anything. And the first thing you want is the ribbon cable. Make sure that it's correctly positioned edge to edge and then you want to support it from the back. I'm very adept at this so I'm, I'm supporting it from the back with my uh, ring finger while I am pushing the ribbon in from the top. Okay. Now very frequently after you uh, disconnect and connect this ribbon uh, you may get this uh, problem when you turn on the machine that it will seem to be homing and when it reaches the end of the limit it will either just sit there and keep buzzing or it will home slowly in the other direction. That means uh, some of the pins in this ribbon aren't making good contact so you have to pull it back out, reseat it, and try again. So it's a good idea before you bolt the gantry down to uh, turn on the laser and see that everything is homing in the correct direction. Okay, so now I've laid the gantry down and get my my Y motor cable out of the way so I can push it in. And it just slips right through there. Okay, so I've got a little custom button control thing for my Z-bed, so I'm going to put that here so I can, so I can close the lid. Turn on my, oh, I almost forgot, got to take off the tape. You can see how I did that. We'll just leave that there for now, just in case. There's probably no need to secure it on both sides of the gantry, since most of the weight is carried on the left side. You can probably get away with just using the tape on the left side. It's not very heavy either. Just don't want that thing smashing into anything when you're lifting it out. Alright, so I'm going to just halfway line up everything with the mounting holes. And turn the laser on just to see if everything moves correctly. And that's what you should expect if everything is connected properly. Okay, so I'm going to turn, uh, yeah, I'll turn that back off. It's a little bit noisy. All right, so now I'm going to check to see if my gantry is uh, sitting square on the uh, sheet metal, and it is not. Okay, so let's see where it's not sitting. So in this corner, it's good. In that corner, it's, uh, it's a little bit loose. In this corner, it's good. And then in this corner, it's very hard to see, but you can see it's moving. So we don't want to force that, right? You don't want to... After having squared your gantry, you do not want to push these bolts in and now flex that gantry. What you want to do is you want to shim under the gantry because we know the gantry is straight. What we've found out now is that our sheet metal is what's not straight. So we're going to shim up. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. We're going to put a shim between the rail and the blue uh, what do you call this stuff? Blue sheet metal. Um, and for lack of anything better, I'm going to use 
a little stack of uh, post-it notes just to count the number of sheets that will fit under that gap. Basically what I want is for there to be very little movement. How many sheets? Too many. Get rid of four. If you're lucky, it would be exactly the width of a washer or something that you have on hand. All right, so it seems to be solid right there, but now it's making this corner over here knock. So that means I've got too many, uh, too many sheets there. Ideally what you want is to put enough of a shim next to this corner so that all the corners are happy. That sounds pretty good there. There's a very slight. All right, so now that I know, okay, so I, I have some papers above, so I'm gonna peel those off. Those didn't make it under. So I'll take those off. And there's, and there's some underneath it as well, so I'll peel those off as well. And now I know what my, what my shim depth needs to be. So I could either do that with the post-it notes themselves, or I could find some other uh, way to shim that up. And let's see, in this back corner here, the opposite diagonal, there's just a hair. I don't think it's enough uh, to warrant shimming up as well, but if you've got some terrible OCD, I suppose you could do that as well. Then uh, it's time to bolt your gantry down. And again, I'm using both hands for filming here, so I'm not gonna go into that so much as to explain what you should go for here. Uh, your number one mirror there has a certain distance to the back wall. And while the sheet metal may not always be square you sort of want to shoot to have that same distance here for number two assuming that it's all straight down uh, so before you begin your alignment maybe you want to keep the gantry loose so you can play with that a bit especially if you had already aligned mirror number one uh, you could you know place a post-it note here and just shoot at number two and see that your, you know, that your number one is still kind of shooting into the right location here. Otherwise, you know, you, ha you have removed the gantry, so uh, it's not unheard of that you're going to have to not just realign your mirrors, but you may have to, uh, you know, move this mounting plate uh, left to right a little bit, and possibly even uh, get under. Let's see if I can show that here. Get under the mirror number two those screws where are they mirror number two has these two screws on slots where you can uh, adjust him as well um, I haven't come up with a video on when that is useful but uh, there are situations uh, 